Welcome back, everyone, to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Saga 960. I think that was a really fascinating conversation about leadership. And I think it's perfectly apt because I want to suggest to you right now that Toronto is faced with an incredible opportunity. We are going to become, in the next uh, five, seven years, the third largest metropolitan region in all of North America, rivaling Los Angeles and New York, bigger than Chicago, Dallas, uh, et cetera. And I don't think we're ready for it. I don't think we've realized it. I don't think we've recognized the opportunity, the economic engine that we're going to uh, create, but also the challenges that we're finally going to have to address in numerous different areas. And, and so I want to talk about the six challenges that I think exist and why I think that I am the right person to run for mayor of Toronto to talk about these challenges and to hopefully lead with the bold leadership that we need, the solutions of these challenges. Let me tell you quickly uh, what these challenges are. Number one, I think it is a housing affordability crisis. Number two, a crime crisis. Number three, a financial uh, crisis. Number four, a transit crisis. Number five, a governance crisis. And finally, number six, a green crisis. Let me elaborate if I could. I think housing affordability is the first crisis, and it's one of the biggest issues uh, that we're faced. And I think that the the problem has been caused by municipal governments. I think low interest rates, I think foreign uh, investment has been at the margin uh, impactful. But I think the biggest reason why is it takes longer to get approvals for housing in the in the greater Toronto area than it does to actually build the housing and get approved. There is more regulation, more red tape, more uh, more interference from government and uh, and 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 other. Uh, other interests than in almost any other sector of uh, society. I was in the pharmaceutical industry at one point in time. There's almost as much, if not more regulation in housing than there is in pharmaceuticals. In pharmaceuticals, I think it's completely justified because you got to test whether a drug makes sense. I think that the amount of uh, of political and regulatory involvement in housing slows it down, increases the cost, creates uncertainty, and means we are building 30 to 50% of the houses that we actually need to have built. Rental uh, controls have been a huge mistake in the past, and uh, every economist agrees that that uh, that they don't make sense. And I think we've got to solve that problem and build more rental housing. I think we need to have more affordable housing and more social housing. I think supply, greater supply, is the number one reason and the number one answer. But I think the other answer is greater height, particularly in major transit areas within walking distance of a of a major transit station. Every architect I've spoken with, and I've interviewed numerous of them on this show, have told me that people actually don't recognize height. After a certain level of, of maybe 10 stories, they, they can't tell whether it's 20 or 30 or 40 stories high. And to give some developer an extra 10 stories or 20 stories even in exchange for greater supply and potentially some uh, inclusion of inclusionary zoning, I think makes a ton of sense. But the number one biggest problem we've got is we've got to speed up the regulatory process of getting housing, apartments, condos uh, approved and built. I think the second issue in that regard is that uh, development fees uh, based on Bill 23 have come down, but the government hasn't addressed the more important issue of what are you going to replace it with? And I think that there's a couple of solutions to that. One is that property taxes have probably got to be increased. And uh, number two, I think that municipalities need their own source of financing, which is probably that one point of the GST, which leads me to uh, uh, issue number two, which is a financial crisis. Toronto is an unbelievable amount of debt and uh, and and a deficit that that is not sustainable. And they're going hand in hand in hat uh, to uh, hat in hand to uh, uh, provincial and federal governments on a repeated basis to try to solve the problem. And they're jacking up things like TTC fares at unsustainable levels uh, because they're not getting the kind of funding they need. Property taxes in Toronto are half what they are on the same value of house as in Hamilton. They're 30 to 40 percent less than the vast majority of cities in around the GTA. And I think it's caused because politicians in the past in Toronto haven't had the spine, the backbone to actually stand up to the local people and say, we actually are paying in Toronto really low property taxes. And we've 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 saddled the commercial sector with huge property taxes that that have allowed this situation to exist. But the reality, if you look at around uh, our competitors, our, 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 our cities around us, that shows what the property taxes should be on uh, on on a certain market value of house. And, and it's going to have to go up, not right away. Uh, uh, but over time, we're going to have to equalize. Property taxes should be the same. There's no reason why property taxes should be so dramatically different in different jurisdictions in the greater Toronto area. 
I think we've wasted money. I think that the, uh, the, the, the rebuild of the Gardner Expressway, which is, I think, something like half a billion dollars, the vast majority of the Toronto budget, doesn't make any sense. And what it does is say something like two to five minutes of a travel time for the commuter, and the vast majority of commuters don't actually go around that part of the, the southeast corner of the, the Gardner Expressway, Don Valley Parkway. We should take it down and make a uh, on-surface boulevard. I think that the Scarborough subway was a mistake, is outrageously expensive and should have been uh, done by way of the the the, uh, the the sky train effectively that was there before by rebuilding it. It works in Vancouver. It works everywhere else. Uh, I don't know why we can't have it there and or the LRT recommendations that were, were made previously. But bottom line, municipalities have the vast majority of uh, the infrastructure uh, in uh, this country. They have the least amount of tax dollars uh, it's property tax, which is a really a wealth tax that uh, funds it. I think they need another source of funding. And so I would campaign for the one point of GST that should go to uh, jurisdictions, uh, municipal jurisdictions, at least in municipal and in, in urban municipal areas, if not, frankly, everywhere. The third crisis is crime. I can't believe that we've got crime on the TTC that we've all seen in the last little while. Uh, People have been talking about defunding the police. We don't need to defund the police. We need to increase funding to the police. We may need to put that funding into special services where people have got education and experience and practice in dealing with mental health problems and other issues. But we need to be safe on the TTC. We need to safe, be safe in our streets. We need to stop this unbelievable amount of, uh, of car thefts, carjacking, et cetera. We need to make sure that Toronto, as it grows, is the safest urban city in all of North America. The fourth issue is transit. We have built this Ontario liner. It's in the construction and the Eglinton Crosstown. Those are great. And I congratulate Metrolinx and the provincial government for, for going ahead with those. But we should have been building a lot more. We have taken a generation out of, uh, of building and we need to catch up. If you superimposed New York or London or Paris or even LA with all of their at-surface uh, LRTs onto Toronto, you'd have three times as much rapid transit, um, uh, BRTs, LRTs, subways, uh, GO trains, and the like. And I think we need, as we grow, to, to invest in that dramatically. And I've got lots of days on that. I am, as uh, some of you know, chair of the Transit Alliance, a civic advocacy organization here in Toronto. And I think that we should be uh, doing some of the things that John Tory talked about with smart tracks. I think that there should be a station at Queen or King on that Barry or Milton line. I think that that should be a stop at St. Clair and at Eglinton. You don't need the stops that I've talked about previously on the East because of this Ontario line. I think that we need to connect to the university line and the young line, probably uh, on Shepherd. I think that we need to, uh, and the Neptus foundation did a major report on this a little while ago. Uh, every major metropolis metropolitan area in the world that has two major employment zones has them connected by way of transit. Um, uh, you, you see this in New York uh, with New Jersey or or, uh, or Long Island or Brooklyn. You see this in uh, in Paris with uh, La Défense. You see this in 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 London. Um, we need to have either the Eglinton Crosstown or the uh, the Pearson uh, the UP Express or something new, which I'd love to suggest. Which is we've got a train line that goes actually from Long Branch. Uh, oh, owned today by Metrolinx, all the way up to the Kipling uh, subway slash GO train station, and then a right-of-way that goes all the way up to Pearson Airport. We should have a western uh, north-south connecting line to Pearson Airport and to uh, and to the airport corporate zone, that second largest employment zone in all of uh, in all of Canada. And if not up that hydro corridor, then up the middle of the 427, like the SkyTrain at JFK uh, runs. It's it's the right thing to do. Uh, the, the highest volume Bus, I understand, is the red rocket that goes from Kipling to uh, to Pearson Airport. Why don't we have a a SkyTrain that goes or a Go Train that goes from Long Branch to Kipling to Pearson and to the airport corporate zone? I think we need to invest in transit. Finally. I think the Blur subway's got to go to Sherway. The train tracks go almost all the way there. Yorkdale uh, gets 50%, 25% to 50%, I understand, on a different daily basis of their traffic from the subway. Sherway should be getting that kind of traffic. And what it does is it dramatically improves the profitability of your transit because shoppers are going the opposite direction than commuters for employment are going. And so it's effectively uh, uh, extra revenue with uh, no incremental fixed cost. I think the next issue is governance. I think that with probably two dozen or a dozen different people running for mayor, someone might get elected with 20% of the vote. That's wrong. I think we should have a preferential vote system or a priority vote system where you uh, make second, third, fourth choices uh, and, uh, and, and no one wins unless they get 
on successive ballots, 50.1% of uh, the vote. And I think uh, we should test it out this time. And I think that uh, we should use it for every ward council race in uh, the upcoming uh, next election. I think that this uh, GTA uh, uh, coordination uh, is a major issue. Uh, I don't think having 29 separate cities around uh, Toronto getting together in a coordinating session with the mayor of Toronto and the premier of Ontario makes a lot of sense. The GTA task force back in the 1996 era uh, recommended that Peel merge, Halton merge, Dufferin merge, York merge into cities. Didn't implement it at the time because there was rural areas that separated the communities that were in those cities. Those rural, rural areas have disappeared uh, predominantly now. And then those five cities reestablish something like uh, the old Metro Toronto Council. Uh, I wouldn't have it uh, be an, a body like the old Metro Council that was a, a second level of government, regional government, but I do think a coordinated entity that meets once a month with five mayors, four mayors in major cities around Toronto and the mayor of Toronto and the premier of Ontario as the chairperson makes a ton of sense because we got to start acting like the economic engine uh, that we are uh, from a metropolitan region. And the last crisis we've got is green space and the green space has been dramatically reduced on a per capita basis and i worry on an absolute basis if you think about manhattan uh, new york you think about central park if you think about vancouver you think about stanley park if you think about london you think about hyde park you think about uh, paris you think about luxembourg gardens what is it in toronto that you think about it could be the toronto islands it could be high park it could be downs view it could be the humber river it should have been in the past the don valley um, all of those, I think, should be exploited. And I think the way that you do it is is we need better access to Toronto Island so that we can get there all the time. And I think a, a pedestrian bridge, a bike bridge, a bike bridge is the right thing to do. The ferry is unique. It's fantastic. It's quaint, but it's slow. It's always got weight lines and it's expensive such that it restricts uh, access to uh, Toronto Island. I think High Park uh, could be and should be exploited uh, to a far greater degree. I think that the Humber River should be connected all the way from the 401 uh, down to the lake, and it's not today, and it should be in with the Martin Goodman Trail. There's land in the Don Valley underneath uh, the, the Blur Viaduct that is the size of Ontario Place. And that should be uh, accessible and it should be exploited. And frankly, Ontario Place is another uh, issue. I think it should be green. It should be like Trivoli Gardens. It should be like Luxembourg Gardens. It should be that place that you go that I went to when I was a kid that was this wonderful waterfront green space, not some big, huge spa. So I think those are the issues that I think need to be addressed in the upcoming election. Uh, just to remind you, I think that uh, the number one issue uh, that we talked about was housing affordability. Number two was the financial crisis. Number three is crime. Number four, transit. We need to build it like crazy. Number five, governance. We need to have a better governance system in the Toronto area. Um, and number six is green space. I've uh, worked in Toronto the vast majority of my adult life. I've been very involved in politics my whole life. I've had the privilege of living and working in Montreal and Markham and Toronto and London and Vancouver and in the United States in, uh, in Boston, New York and Los Angeles. So I've seen how different governments work, how different cities work, and I can bring that experience. I've been involved. I've been president of a local uh, arts council. I've been chairman of a city summit. I've been... Um, uh, and I am uh, chair of Transit Alliance. I, I, I've got, I think, the educational background uh, with a, an MBA from Harvard. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to complete a doctorate in business uh, where I'm talking about the importance of community. There's only one problem. I've been involved in politics my whole life. There's only one problem. I don't live in Toronto. So I guess that dream can't come true. Plus, it's uh, the 1st of April. Anyway, that's my show for tonight. I wish I could be running for the mayor of uh, Toronto. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a great evening. April Fool's.